Okay, um, so that was our basic physical exam in, in a very short period of time. When we have a rabbit that's ill, what are, we, what are we looking out for? What can we identify in our rabbits to say that something's wrong and they, they need to come into the hospital? Well, sort of our general signs. Are they lethargic? Are they anorexic? Are they kind of hunched and just sitting there and not, you know, relaxed and wanting to hop around and, and do their normal behaviors? Um, then what we're going to do is kind of look at different gastrointestinal issues that we need to look out for. So, so if I'm concerned about the, the gastrointestinal tract, certain signs that I might see that tells me something's wrong with that gastrointestinal tract, well, the biggest number one thing is anorexia. Is the rabbit eating or not eating? Um, rabbits are always supposed to be eating. If they're not eating, that's a problem. Um, so, and it can let me know there's something going on, at least partially, with that gastrointestinal tract. The thing is, is the gastrointestinal tract, you can have a primary gastrointestinal problem going on, where there's something directly problematic with that gastrointestinal tract, or you can have what's called a secondary gastrointestinal tract problem where you have something else going on in the body that's secondarily making it so that gastrointestinal tract is not functioning as well as it should. So we're looking for signs of anorexia, a hunched posture. The reason a hunched posture, because that can mean that I'm in pain. My stomach really hurts. My intestines really hurt. Uh, stools, are they reduced in number? Are they reduced in size? Or are they completely gone? Are they weird shapes? Is there mucus? Is there blood? All that kind of stuff. And then a low temperature. Um, the normal temperature for a rabbit is 100 degrees to 104. 100 to 103 is what I like to see. When they start to get above 103, it's 103 to 104 is still a normal temperature range for a rabbit, but it always makes me question why are you at that upper end of that temperature range. For a rabbit that's coming into the hospital, and it's a hot day outside, they had to get in a car, into their carrier, they come in here, they're nervous, they're stressed. We, it's very common for us to see a temperature of 103.5, 104, and me not be worried about it, because a stressed rabbit, their temperature will go up. But if it's at home, in a relaxed environment, air conditioned, and your temperature is up a bit in that 103 to 104, I do start to question it. Technically, it's still normal but I start to wonder a little bit. Um, with the gastrointestinal tract, the temperature often, if there's a problem with the gastrointestinal tract, the temperature will often go low. And the reason being, because rabbits are always eating and always pooping, that gastrointestinal tract is always moving. And that gastrointestinal tract, because it's always moving, when you actually look at what the gastrointestinal tract is, it's a huge muscle, essentially. And so all that muscle activity, all the time, that's generating heat. And so it's like their own little, like, internal oven inside of them. And if that gastrointestinal tract motility is reduced at all, well, it's like you just turn the oven off. So their temperature drops. So that's why you see a low temperature with gastrointestinal issues. All right, so signs that we could have a, a dental issue on our hands. Drooling is our big thing. Being picky about our food items, like we talked about earlier. Um, if they're anorexic. Uh, if they're having weird chewing motions, like I've, I've had people come in before and be like, you know, he used to kind of chew with both sides of his mouth because rabbits kind of, when they are chewing, they actually do sort of a roundabout kind of movement. And then people will sometimes come in and say, he used to do that, and now he just seems to be chewing on one side. He doesn't seem to have that normal, complete, circular motion with his mouth. Um, and then, of course, the other thing to look out for that's very obvious when that we have some dental issues is some long teeth. And so you can see this guy, as opposed to that original picture that we looked at before of the teeth, um, where those teeth were nice and symmetrical. This guy, those incisors are extremely long. They're not lining up together nicely. You have one that's splayed off to the side. And then those in the lower incisors are coming in front of the upper incisors. And, you know, really, the upper incisors should be just covering those lower incisors. If those upper incisors are hitting the lower incisors, or the lower incisors are in front of the upper incisors, that's abnormal, abnormal bite. Um, and then this little rabbit down here, unfortunately, it doesn't project perfect, but this is his chin. Well, that, that's his chin, and that's his shoulder region. And all that stuff is just drool. So he basically has been drooling for quite a long period of time to the point where all this moisture 
and then them just kind of sitting there and kind of getting all hunched, that moisture kind of sits in the folds of the skin there, and there's naturally bacteria, there's naturally yeast on the skin. We all have it, all animals have it, it's just there, it's normal, it's just what it is. But if you have a nice little warm, moist environment for those little bacteria there, the bacteria get really happy and the bacteria reproduce and overgrow and then they start to really cause issues and irritations and you get an infection going on secondarily. <clears throat> and so that's what's going on with that little guy there. But though it looks like this guy, if he came into the hospital and you just saw this and you didn't know anything about rabbits, you may say, oh, he just has a skin infection. But that's a key that, oh, we have to look into that mouth because, yeah, we do have a skin infection going on, but there's probably something going on in that mouth to say that there's something else initiating this problem. Okay, so respiratory signs. How can we tell that something's going on there? Well, nasal discharge. So you have this nice black bunny here who has a nice white booger coming out of the nose. Very nice and obvious. But like we were saying earlier, the unfortunate thing is rabbits, they like to be clean. And so sometimes they'll sneeze those things out and then, oh, I gotta clean that off and I don't ever let anybody see that because I don't like that. So rabbits do have a little bit of white stuff normally. So their yeah. discharge, they, their tear ducts, so their, their tears that they have are different than ours. When we have tears, our tears are supposed to be nice and clear. Rabbits do have a little bit of milky color to their, to their tears. And so sometimes you'll see some tearing that is like kind of milky. That's normal. But they have that little duct, the nasolacrimal duct. It's the duct that exists between the eye and the nose. And that's why like when you cry, you then are blowing your nose it's because all that stuff's going flushing down into there. Same thing with rabbits. Um, so that milky stuff can travel down that little duct and out into the nares. And sometimes you could potentially see a tiny little bit of white. Yeah. But for like this guy, that's a good booger of white stuff that's hanging out there. So that's abnormal. If you see a tiny little bit, we're fine. Or like on this white guy here, he's got, you know, all this kind of crusty stuff stuck there. Um, sneezing, of course, is a sign that we have some sort of respiratory problem going on. Flaring their nostrils. Rabbits do not want to open their mouth to breathe. If you or I have a stuffy nose, we open our mouth to breathe. We don't care. Life is fine. But these guys really do not like to open their mouth to breathe, just because kind of the way their anatomy is. It's much easier and normal for them to want to breathe from their nares. And so if they do have some sort of respiratory problem going on, they may really be flaring those nostrils. And that may be the only sign that you see, is that those nostrils are just like moving up and down a lot because they're really working hard to breathe. The other thing, if they have like a real problem in their, in their lungs, you may actually see them having to start to move their abdomen to really be, to be breathing. Um, or like this little guy, he's extending his head and, and his neck. And the reason he's doing that is because that actually kind of lines that respiratory tract up in a much easier position for him to take a breath. But a rabbit should never be doing that. You never want to see your rabbit sticking its head up like that because that's a rabbit that's really, really working hard to breathe. That's a rabbit that's definitely an emergency situation and needs to be sitting in an oxygen chamber. Um, if we have a rabbit that, if you look at it and it really is opening its mouth to breathe, like it's sitting there and it's doing little gasping, that's a rabbit that is working really hard. That's a rabbit that has to come into the hospital. So, But if you do rapid fire sneezing, and then you're okay for several hours, and then you do it again later, or you rapid fire sneeze, and you're fine for a day, and the next day it happens again, no, then that's abnormal. Okay. If it's, yeah. if it's occasional, they probably just sniff something up into their nose, and they're just, oh my god, I'm really irritated by this, like, get this thing out, because 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 of the fact that they want to breathe through their nares. They're, yeah. they're called obligate nasal breathers, and it's because they want to breathe through their nose as opposed to through their mouth. And so getting something in that nostril, can be extremely irritating to them and can make them do that really rapid fire sneezing for a moment. Yeah. But as long as it's for a moment and it's not being repeated yeah. and it's just occasional, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Awesome. All right, so signs to look out for that there's something wrong with the urinary tract. Well, blood in the urine, kind of an obvious thing, but um, not always as obvious as we'd like it to be in rabbits because rabbits can produce pigment in their urine and excrete pigment in their urine. And so sometimes rabbits will have orange colored urine. And I mean, it happens a lot that people call the hospital and say, oh my gosh, my rabbit has blood in the urine. And then they come in, they look totally fine, they pee, and it's, you know, 
maybe like a orangey reddish and then we asked them their diet history and it turns out they did have something that could cause them to, to have a little bit of that color change to there and it's okay but if you actually see frank blood like red blood abnormal little like yellow urine and then little clots of blood abnormal um, if you have really cloudy or sandy appearance to the urine rabbits do excrete a lot of calcium into their bladder they're a little bit different than some other animals um, but they do have a lot of calcium that gets excreted into that bladder and then they pee it out so they do normally have a little bit of a of a um, kind of slight chalkiness to their urine but if you see urine that looks like that I mean that's like dried sand that that came out of that rabbit that's really abnormal that's sludge and so that's when you have a bunch of that calcium that's just been sitting in that bladder and kind of congealing together and it literally is like having sand in the bladder and passing that is not very pleasant for the rabbits um, so if you see anything like that definitely a sign that oh they need to come in this is just sitting on a on a um like a little white towel and it'll be like it'll be thick like if it's just regular urine you know yeah it's gonna sit make the the newspaper wet but then it'll dry and everything's fine. You don't really see it. You can tell the newspaper's maybe just a little crinkly because somebody did pee there. Versus that, that's going to sit there. And it's going to look like dried sand or cement. <laughs> um, if there's straining in the litter box. Uh, a lot of times people do come in and say, my rabbit is straining. He's going in the litter box and he's straining. And they think it's a problem with pooping. Nine times out of ten, it's not that they're straining to poop, it's that they're straining to urinate. So if you do see any straining in the box, like they just keep going into that box and they're sitting there and they're just, you know, very concerned look on their face, they look like they're tense, and then nothing's really happening, that could mean that, yeah, we have some urinary tract issues going on. If there's some change in their litter habits, like they used to be fabulous about going into their litter box and never making any messes, and then all of a sudden you have them peeing outside the box, could potentially be a urinary tract sign, could be something else going on, um, but something to key you in. And then I put as the last thing kind of pushing up their back end um, because a rabbit that has something like sludge or urinary tract infection or bladder stone, something going on in that bladder, if they're really painful in that bladder for whatever reason, sometimes they just sit there and they just lift up their little butt and then they sit back down. And it's because that is actually them either trying to get into a position that's more comfortable or that's them actually straining. And so, you know, their signs of straining may look different from other animals, but it, you're kind of just seeing that little butt just go up and then relax. And it's truly that I'm irritated down there for some reason. Mm -hmm. So, all right. And then the integument, which that's just a fancy name for skin. Um, to let us know if there's something something abnormal there. There's little Wooly Woo, which since all you guys are here for Zoo Corner stuff, I'm sure you've seen little Wooly Woo. <laughs> there she is, on her, on her, on her first day when she came in. Um, so we definitely were able to tell there was a problem with her skin uh, because she had all this crusting, um, little patches of hair loss, uh, redness to the skin. But, well, of course, we're looking for other things because many things can go wrong with the skin. Any sort of cuts, lacerations, weird lumps or bumps, that kind of stuff. So, this little guy, he just has a huge patch of fur that's lost. This guy has a cut in his side. Um, so, things to look out for to say that we could say we have a nervous system problem. Uh, one of the first things is being wobbly. The technical term is ataxia. Uh, but when I'm having people or questioning people about what they're seeing at home is, is your rabbit walking around like they're drunk? Do they seem to really kind of be all over the place? Are those limbs not underneath them and having a normal posture where everything looks nice and symmetrical and okay? Or do those limbs kind of look like they're flailing different places? Do they seem to, you know, want to like hug the wall when they're walking around? Do they not want to walk around? Do they want to just sit there? When they do walk around, do they seem to fall to the side? That sort of thing. Um, are they dragging any limbs? Are they scuffing their toenails when they're hopping? Um, any head tilting or any seizure activity? So this little guy down there with his head tilt, this little guy, his legs are just totally splayed out. This guy is like, his world is probably very um, wobbly right now and he can't really tell what's going on. He's just trying to balance himself. 
And then this little guy down here, this guy is a um, rabbit with a broken back. And so, yes, his back is broken, so that's a musculoskeletal problem, but the real problem is that in your back, you have your spinal cord. And when you have a broken back, it damages that spinal cord. And in damaging that spinal cord, if our damage is like up here, everything back here is not going to function well. And so those hind limbs aren't going to function well, the bladder's not going to function well, the gastrointestinal tract isn't going to function well. So it's a real, real unfortunate issue and common issue with bunnies.